Item number one, approve hiring list, firefighter paid on call list 2022. Not authorized to hire. Chief. Thank you. Yeah, so um, last year we got approval by council to do a um, hiring list and a hiring um, due to the number of applicants. We never did that process. So um, just coming back to you this year to um, authorize us to um, start the hiring process, establish a list, and then hire up to four paid on call firefighters. Try to have them on staff by uh, July-ish. I make a motion to approve the fire department to establish a paid on call firefighter hiring list and to hire up to four paid on call firefighters. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Next item is the approval of hiring of a police officer, Hunter Williams, Deputy Chief. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Police officer candidate Hunter Williams successfully completed his pre employment screening. He's scheduled to start with our department on April 11th uh, on 2022 step one rate of $29.79 pursuant to the LELS bargaining agreement. Uh, Hunter will bring our staffing level to 25 sworn officers with a 2022 budget of 26. Uh, recommendation moving forward is hiring of Hunter Williams uh, starting at step one, uh, effective date April 11th. I move that we hire police officer Hunter Williams starting at LELS step one rate 29.79 starting April 11th. And I'll second that. A motion and second. Any discussion or questions? Seeing none, we'll vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Next up is to accept the resignation of Community Development Director David Chansey. On March 22nd, Community Development Director David Chansey submitted his resignation. Mr. Chansky has accepted a position as a city administrator with the City of Breezy Point, and his last working day with us will be April 22nd. Um, Jennifer and I met with the community development staff to try to talk about the transition period a little bit after David's resignation. At this point, staff is recommending that we appoint Assistant Planner James Cranbeck as the Acting Community Development Director during the hiring process. Um, we do have in our employee policy manual guidance for an acting department head, and so to follow that, um, he would be starting at step one of that wage grid. I included the wage grid in the council packet. Um, Mr. Kramnick had said that he felt that was acceptable, um, but we still need to negotiate that with the union. So part of our recommendation is to also negotiate that with the IBEW union. The last thing that we are asking for is a work group be formed. Um, comprised of a couple city council members, a volunteer selected by our council president, and just working with myself and Jennifer to go through this hiring process. Do you have any questions at all? I and mean, part of this work group's work would be to I, I review the job description and see what we want moving forward out of that position. Mr. Chair, if I may. Yeah. I think so. We've had this position, I think it's going on three and a half years. Um, might be a good time to just kind of evaluate, see what the council's needs are, wants are. And so that was really the intention of the work group. Okay. Okay. I'd make a motion to accept staff's recommendations and motions as we move forward. Do you want that to include looking at the job description? No, that's, that's fine. That's that's fine. Just making sure that is kind of what the work group's doing. Okay. I will second that. We have a motion and a second, and that's and your motion is all, all three. Right. Correct. Correct. All things. Correct. Okay. Correct. Any so discussion? It's easier that way than to read them all. Again. Yeah, I like one. <laughs> Hearing none, we'll vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Next up is authorization to enter into consultant agreements for sanitary, sanitary and storm sewer financial plans and rate design studies. Correct, so um, you know the city hired the consultant in 2018. We entered into a new rate study. Um, we actually changed the structure of how we charge for storm sewer at that point. I do believe we did that in 2016 and then we reviewed it in 2017 to make sure it was going. 
Um, we reached out to the same consultant that we had used at that point and that BPU also uses for their rate studies. And they gave us a proposal of about uh, 5,900 for storm sewer and 6,200 for sanitary sewer. We did budget for um, professional services in 2021. However, it is not enough at the estimate, but we had budgeted also in 2021 and did not perform the study. So between the two years, we have enough to cover the studies. Um, I guess if there's any questions, staff would author would recommendation would be to, uh, um, to enter into agreements with USF to perform the financial plans and rate study designed for the sanitary and, sewer and storm sewer rate funds. I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I think it's a waste of money. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? That motion carries. Next up, item number five, discussion of the number of on-sale liquor licenses issued to one person. So staff has been reached out by two different um, business owners that currently have a class two liquor license, but maybe want to have another class two liquor license. We looked into our code and that is currently not allowed. You can only have one on-sale and one off-sale liquor license. State statutes limits the number of off-sale you can have, but they do not limit the number of on-sale liquor license you could have. Staff kind of met internally and discussed and were, how do we approach this? Um, you know, we feel it would be very beneficial to have multiple class two, which is our restaurant um, type establishments. Um, however, we thought of if we would allow unlimited number of class one, that someone could potentially, I don't know if it would ever happen, but they could, um, one person could hold all 12 of our class one or our bar licenses. So staff is proposing to have discussion on the number of on sale intoxicating liquor license that could be directly or indirectly issued within the city to any one person. Staff's recommendation would be to not limit as in state statute, but maybe to put a limit on the number of class one license that a person could hold. And also, Mr. Chair, we did ask Chief Festel too if there were any concerns from a police perspective, and he had no issues with this as well. So if we have discussion, give direction to staff, and then we'll bring it form. If you choose to change the ordinance, we'll bring it back and or change the code, we'll bring it back in the ordinance at the next meeting. Yeah, personally, I, I like his, uh, what staff's direction or recommendation here is, and that's kind of open up class twos, but continue to limit class ones mm -hmm. to. You get that one license for a class one. Or class three as well. Because class three is your bowling alleys and your... Well, I, we, hey, if somebody wants to open two bowling alleys? That's, yeah, that's the thing. Exactly. Two bowling alleys too. <laughs> so yeah. we'd just be limiting the number in class one. Oh, I agree. Do you guys want direction. a motion or... Did you... There's directions. Direction. Uh, just discussion to see how you felt before we brought it back. Hey, I'll, yeah, I'll bring it up again upstairs and see if anybody has any... Okay. Thoughts okay. other than that. And then we'll move forward to the next meeting. All right, thanks for that. Next up, six, discussion of 2023 capital equipment and facility budget. This is why we had so much time here tonight. Correct. We're going to go item by item. Yes. So in the packet, um, we had a memo from staff. Um, uh, we had the memo that kind of went through, and it highlighted anyone that had changed or had been added from what we had when we adopted the capital plan in December. So if we, I don't know if we want to go through this or if we want to go look at the budget comparison of what was in the plan. I think it would be beneficial to go through the items such as this and we can always refer back to the memo if you have questions of why things changed. Do it. So we have the city hall bathrooms. Um, that was one thing that did not get touched during our city hall remodeling. Um, we did increase the price just due to building costs increasing. Um, nothing changed with the demo of the Lum Park offices. The pavilion costs for the Lum Park pavilions did increase, and that is again due to cost of materials. So I have a question. I looked at this, and the Parks Department increased like everything. Mm -hmm. They're the one department who gave us their capital plan in December. So this is three months later, and they're just going to double the cost of everything? I'm not in favor of that. I could see if the police or fire department came and said, hey, last March we thought it was going to be 100, but now it's going to be 150. But the parks department is saying, hey, remember like six weeks ago, remember five meetings ago? We got to double it. I don't like that. 
I think also, too, there's a little confusion on when we change the price. We don't have inflation built into the plan. This plan was created in December, got right. it. This isn't about building inflation 10 years down the right. road. This but was created in December. I do believe what they looked at in December was 2022 and maybe weren't focusing as much on 2023 and beyond. That was our mistake, is what I would what I would have to say. But that would be a good question for the... Um, for. Yeah, we'll ask you when they present the budget. Yeah. Um, uh, the, so they got rid of the um, JC's pavilion when the park board was going through each park. They decided that they did not need a pavilion at JC's, but they would just be, um, but yet they realized that the restroom and the um, warming house and concessions was not enough money based on what went into Memorial Park as well. So that's why that price increased as well. Um, the Memorial Park. Concessions, lockers, and restrooms. Again, we see price increase as Gabe has already shared. And then the Memorial Park shelter also due to price. Um, the welcome signs we removed because that was doing the maintenance on the welcome signs when talking with, um, with Public Works Director Sandy. The Parks Department already does that, and so therefore we removed it from the item. The other two items in City Hall is just general office furniture. And then the generator, we did add that in the fall of 2021, and we did increase the price Again, when we're looking at the items, the price increased. Um, for administration, we try to replace the scanner every year. We have uh, basically four, four, um, four scanners, and so we try to replace one every year. Um, and then we have the wage study, which again, that was added in the fall of 2021, due when we were going through union negotiations. Under ITGIS, we have a server replacement. We have a server replacement scheduled every year. We'll get into that in a little bit. Um, the battery backup stayed the same. Now the phone system, that actually, um, you can see that it, there was nothing in the budget and now it's 60,000, but in 2025, it went from 80,000 to 20,000. And this is very confusing, so I'm going to go to the memo because it got very techy on me. So the server that the current phone system was on was supposed to replace in 2021. It did not get replaced in 2021 due to shortage of items and costs and that kind of things. So rather than replacing the server, we're looking at outsourcing and having be host like in the cloud. So then in 2025, we'll only have to replace the phone components rather than the whole entire system. So that's where the change in the price happened. The security camera and door access are all for the street garage, which was an oversight and when the original bid, nobody included that in, that, those items in the cost of the garage remodel portion. Um, you know, and then as we're going out here, he's just changing items as far as like um, if we're going to replace the server that the finance permit BSNA is on and then doing the same server to uh, laser fish to move those to the cloud at the same time. The goal is is that if we move things to the cloud eventually we will not have to maintain as many servers in-house as what we have currently have right now. I think that one of the things that the COVID-19 did help us out with is that remote access is probably a good thing and something to move towards. I know Sean's not in here but maybe you explain it to me why, why does it cost $50,000 to move to the cloud? I do not know that, but it is expensive to move to the cloud. It is what any migration we have done, it is that's the cost. And so I trust that he knows what the cost is. Um, I think also what we look at for the plan right now is that the council isn't approving these items because I think we have to look to see how it all fits together in the overall budget and how the levy and all of that fits together. But I think what we're looking at now is these are items that we're considering, but let's move forward and have staff vet them and get a better price. Maybe these prices are too high, maybe they're too low, and then we can see how they come together in the fall when we have better idea of pricing. We don't want staff spending time vetting these projects if council does not want to do them. Well, can we tell you which ones we don't want right now? Sure. Okay. Well, let's wait till we get to it. Okay. All right, so we talked about- the uh, following statement. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you which ones I don't want. Everything that changed from last year, I don't want. <laughs> Learn how to plan. Yes. 
So um, under the police department, we're continuing to lease the squads, but it, however, we have a lot of equipment, almost more than what the cars work, that goes into those vehicles, and so that's why we have the squad lease buildup of cars. Uh, is that two cars, three cars? How many is that? I do believe that is three cars, maybe four. So $30,000 worth of equipment and we can't like reuse it? We try to reuse as much as we possibly can. And what do we do with the old stuff? We sell it or we just sell give it, it to Crosby? Recycle it. Fire equipment. Recycle it. We got a good deal on that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good deal. Um, it is two squad, two marks, and two um, unmarked. So that's four cars. Yeah, okay. so the, the, the buildup of the least, or I mean of the marked squads are about $24,000 each. And the cost of the buildup of the unmarked is about twelve thousand five hundred wow. each. A lot of computers go in there. Check. Can you say distracted driving? <laughs> <laughs> Office furniture stayed the same, and then we have squad room reconfiguration. Again, it was an increase in cost as far as how things are going and what we've done in the past. I'll allow it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one change you don't object to. <laughs> You won't 20 percent increase day. after five years. That makes sense. A 100 percent increase after six meetings doesn't make sense to you. Then we have the fire department. Um, so this is something that we need to look at. I think um, I think it makes sense to continue to lease vehicles for certain departments, um, but we're having trouble, as everybody is, in finding vehicles and getting vehicles and securing vehicles. And the chief thought maybe we keep this lease vehicle that we have at the fire department. We don't have the build-up costs, and we continue to run that vehicle. So this is something I think that we need to explore. Once we get closer to the budget, we find out what the outlook looks like as far as from enterprise, and we can make a decision when we go from there. Um, then we also have the, so we're leasing another vehicle, and then we have to put some equipment in there. Um, we have the apparatus iPad replacement. Now that did get removed. I should, sorry, back up here a little bit. Um, the rescue apparatus we moved from 20, 2016, or sorry, 2026 to 2024. I'll let the chief, I wasn't able to work with the chief on why he moved it up, um, but he is here if you have that question. We removed the apparatus for the iPad replacement. We can get that all done in 2023. Um, so that's with the fire department. Uh, question, if, if I... If you can answer, Tim. So we're going to purchase Squad 1, which is the truck you currently drive? That's Un under this plan, that's what we'd be doing? Yeah, and so when we built this, it was the time where we were having trouble getting lease. So it was just, I put it in there as an option. Um, mm -hmm. if, if leasing is available and we want to continue to do that, we certainly can. Um, I'd say the advantage with purchasing the vehicle I drive now is all the lights and everything are already on it. We've That's not easy to build up. Not right. cheap to build up. Right. Yeah. So, you know, we save that. Um, we would have to check with Enterprise to see if 35000 is a true payout on that vehicle since they are taking those vehicles and getting yeah, prime so. dollar yeah. for them at this point. So, um, at the time, this was just a way to uh, account for that shortage in vehicles. So. Um, if we, as we move forward, if we want to look into that, we certainly can, or we can continue the, the, with the lease. Yeah, process. and I, I like the idea of buying, especially with highly specific equipment like your truck. Hopefully, it can last for ten years instead of just five or seven or whatever. But my ultimate question here is: I see we have a buildup of leased car one and leased car two, but as far as I know, you and Mr. Cox are the only two employees over there. Why do we need three cars? So, um, so squad one is, uh, would be the replacement of um, a 1997 vehicle that we have now as a squad for hauling equipment around and things like that. So oh, so it's a truck you have sitting yeah. that, correct. that wouldn't be leasing. That, correct, that we're not leasing. So we'd still be leasing your car and correct. the deputy chief's car, whatever correct. the title is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I was just the the naming is hard because you know it's a it's a pickup, mm -hmm. the same as what we but it's a more utility um, for bringing hose back and forth to the scene, moving guys around, gear around, big items like that. 
I might have the terminology not to go back, but also you asked what we do with the equipment from the police cars. We reuse as much as we can, if we can. The problem that we're having though is that manufacturers are changing their style and their manufacturing, so a lot of times the equipment can't go from one car to a different car because of that reason too. So it's expensive, yes it is. Um, so that's the fire department. Um, do you want to address moving the uh, rescue apparatus from 2016 to 2024? Sure. So, um, so if you recall, last year I came to PNF um, getting permission to sell our Rescue 2, which is an old ambulance, a 1999 ambulance. Yeah. We were going to get one donated from North Ambulance. Um, that deal fell through, didn't end up working out, so we have since kept that 1999 rescue apparatus. Um, this would be replacing that, um, just moved it up due to the age. Again, we're talking about trying to separate like apparatus on the purchases, so um, keeping um, the tender at 2026 and it makes it about 20 or uh, nine years roughly between the purchase of the first one and then this one. So again, trying to gap those out. Yep. So that's that was the reason seeing. for doing that. So, so the rescue apparatus, essentially an ambulance, four hundred thousand uh, dollars. So, so this will be different than an ambulance. It'll be set up with um, a SCBA compressor on it. So when we get on fire scenes, we can fill our air bottles on scene. Um, right now we use a portable trailer from Deerwood. Um, they're in the process of getting rid of that trailer um, because of maintenance costs. So we don't have that luxury. So um, if we don't have that trailer on scene, we have to go back to the fire hall, fill bottles, bring them back. So this is kind of filling a need that, that we don't have right now. Thanks for that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the civil defense sirens, um, we had them replaced every five years on a schedule, however we have one that is no longer working. And so therefore we were going to, she put it on to have it be replaced in 2023. Which neighborhood has a non-working siren? So the uh, siren by the Old State Hospital doesn't work. It's been repaired twice. Uh, the motor <coughs> inside of it is seized up. It's the same age as the siren we replaced down in Graydon last year which is, we figure, between mid-40s and 50s. So just parts and really putting the money into it isn't worth the value of mm -hmm. the, the siren. So um, so that will be the last. So we have one more siren in town, um, right downtown, um, is the, would be the last uh, siren of a, over 40 years old. Pretty World War II, it's not Correct. vintage. Yeah, uh, it, it really put up when they were designed as civil defense sirens versus what we're using them now for outdoor warning. And we will, um, as far as the one downtown, we'll do a study to determine if the new sirens are covering the area that is covered by that old siren. So maybe we might have enough overlap not to have to replace that one because it's in a really hard spot to be replaced. Uh, VPU has a lot of wires on it and a lot of stuff on it too, so um, we would determine if that one really needs to be replaced at the time. But that's why that did get moved up, is because that one is uh, inoperable right now down by the state hospital. All right. Okay, then if we go to community development, um, they basically have a scanner, then they lease, they have three lease vehicles in that department. When you see the X, that means that there's no buildup. It's just kind of our host, our placeholder. So um, you'll see that with some of the with community development in the parks. Um, if we look at going through, so the three vehicles in community development are those all the building officials and inspectors and whatnot. That's what all three of them are used for. There isn't like a spare. Um, you know, if staff would need it, we probably could use it if we needed to go to a conference or something. But generally, we try to keep it for those three employees. Um, if we go through the parks department, the only thing that increased as far, I mean, stuff increased, the mower increase in cost. Um, the security cameras, we found out that the $6,500 that we had in the budget was not enough, and we need the Wi-Fi cameras, and so therefore, 
the cost increased to $8,000. Um, the bus to park gazebo, we did have money in the budget for 2021 for a gazebo. Again, the amount of money was not enough to build the gazebo, so therefore it was not done. And then this was added to the plan in 2023. So I was on the city council when Buster Park was built. And they raised like $15,000 and donated it to the city. And here we are like five years later, we have to put, we have to put more than the entire cost of the park into the park? Well, it seems like it was a bad gift. The gazebo was there before Buster Park, at least, has been there forever. Well, anyway, the thing I want to remove right now is the Buffalo Hills parking lot surfacing. Um, Just by looking at what our, our uh, crack ceiling bids and all that, that we're over double what we expected. I imagine parking lots are going to be over double what we expect, too. And that's where I think, too, once we you know get councils, yes, vet these items. Not We're not saying these are the items that we're going to do, but vet these items. We could come back and say, no, this is ridiculous, or no, this is too much, or whatever it is. So, um, so yes, at the, the buff surfacing, sorry, I missed that one. They also have Memorial Parking Lot resurfacing. We knew we were going to have to do this when we purchase that parking lot. Um, Triangle Park, a shade structure that stayed the same. Um, streets, um, increase in the motor grader price. Um, and then the street scan implementation, we moved this from the five year street capital plan to the equipment plan because we think that is a better fit of where it should be versus in the capital plan. Get that out of here, we don't want it. So what I'm hearing from Gabe is remove the streetscape. Well, I think what I'm gonna what, what I what I want to do upstairs is just kind of tell everybody to look, just look at this, go through it, give your opinions to staff on what we do or don't want vetted, and if there seems to be a consensus of the council that's not interested in building a parking lot next year, let's not vet it. Okay. But I'd like to get everybody's input. But I mean, if, I'll, I'll let you finish up before I. Point out what you're already going to point out. So what I have is remove the street scanscape in, in 2024, remove the Buffalo Hills parking lot in 2023. That's what that's what I want to do, but I you know. I think your idea of having people look up and come back with ideas is good. Yeah, I mean you know Ted Erickson might really love parking lots, and we still need to build a parking lot. You know, so we'll. I think another thing, you know, when we are looking at it, we focus so much on the very next year. And I don't think we look at what what is the price going to be in 2024? What's the price going to be in 2025? And I guess also council direction on that would be very nice. Should we, when we're looking out to 24, 25, do we say that's the price it is to build right now in 2022? And that's what we put in the plan? Or how do we do this? You ask every year, Connie, and every year, the consensus, the unanimous consensus so far, unless somebody's opinion has changed, is don't account for inflation. Yep. If you do notice a cost adjustment, go ahead and, okay. and change it. But we don't need just a universal, it's right. going to be 5% inflation. Right, no, I agree with that. So I like think that we when need Tim to buys his that. next tender, and it's, ends up, it's not 380, it's 420, mm -hmm. all tenders in the plan go to 420. Yep. Right. And that's what I think we need to also look at going forward that we might do the current year, but we might not do subsequent years. So we'll take a look at that to make sure we're on the same page. But I mean, we're on the back, we're on the parks. This isn't an inflation thing. This plan is literally four months old. We had inflation four months ago. We had a high cost of material four months ago, right? This isn't an inflation thing in the parks. This is just poor planning. I think the plans are still a work in process. I think that they did a tremendous amount of work in November, October, November, December going through, I think we missed some stuff. Oh, well, yeah, we'll find stuff that we missed, but... But then let's go down to the bottom. Are you, are you done going through item by item? I do believe we went through item by item. Okay, we made it all the way down. Yeah. So if you look, we're 25% higher than we were in December, right? We have found 400,000 additional dollars to spend. Yes, technically we can afford it, but it seems every year we've got to spend two million this year, 
So in four years, we only spend 1.3. I would like to see the capital plan be stable. This plan is for a stable financial planning for the city. It's not to spend as much as you can right now to maybe save money in five years. It should be essentially the same amount of money every year. Perhaps some spikes when we're buying $2 million red trucks. But other than that, it should be stable. It shouldn't just be... Those get, are expensive get used to trucks. It. Yeah. Get used to it. <laughs> but that's that's my I don't I don't like this twenty five percent jump. Last year you said we were gonna be lower, but now we're just gonna stay at two million again. I look at the plan for twenty twenty three actually increased even more. Yeah, that's that's a fire truck though. <laughs> Part of it, yeah. So that's what I said, red trucks got yeah. spikes. We but in the that. year that it came off, we really didn't decrease that much. It doesn't surprise me. <clears throat> so any other thoughts? I think we need to consider looking at the 1.2 million we levy every year. Mm -hmm. we, might, we, might, we might be over levying on the capital levy because we're, we're increasing everything by 25% every year and we're still just building gigantic fund balances moving forward. So perhaps taxes are too high. I won't say that for sure, Kevin. But there's a chance the taxes may Darn, be I was going home with company. <laughs> <laughs> you can lower mine anytime you want. No other discussion? No. Anything else we should know, Kami? No. I... Well, thanks for putting this together and getting it done in the spring again. I like working on the budget all year long. I love it. And I think that I just can't keep my year straight when I'm working on the current year, next year, and still working on the audit. And so I'm I apologize. On yeah. my checks. So I apologize if I'm uh, yeah. uh, the wrong thing. And so I think the next step then will be looking at um, uh, step looking at the capital plan. Um, we'll be looking at some of the items um, that we'll need to prepare the debt levy, and we'll work on that as the next step in the budget process. Excellent. And the debt levy is going down again. I hope. I have not started. We're going to about pretty much <laughs> stabilized there. I, I think so. we got rid of all the bad debt. Now we're just going to have our. I hope so. That would be the plan. Well, all right. So then, the last item on our agenda is an update on requests for funds to be returned from the Lakes Area Media Collaborative. Roughly seven hundred thousand dollars. Connie, is there any update? There's no update. There is no update. No update. Imagine. <laughs> Do you need a motion on that? <laughs> With that, we'll adjourn. We got 10 minutes to get upstairs where the full council meeting.